I work hard to earn my pay And I saved real big today At All American Ford Hey everyone, I'm Jason Smino, the marketing director for the All American Auto Group, and this is the All American Auto Mall and Old Bridge Updates podcast. I'm here with my brother Nick Savino, the fixed ops director um, for our auto mall here in Old Bridge. We have a new setup, as you can see. So um, anybody watching the video on YouTube or Facebook can see our new setup. We'll post a picture of it on our social media platforms as well, and for the audio, obviously. Um, you could always find our stuff at uh, aapodcastnj.com for past episodes. So this is episode number 55. And uh, last episode, we, or just I was on it, um, I talked about the Xavier McKinney autograph signing. Um, so I could get your reaction to that because you were there. I mean, it was a pretty impressive uh, it really showing. Was, right? There's a ton of customers, a ton of fans came, the line was around the block. I don't think you got here yet. I talked about it on the last episode. This one kid brought a gigantic giant helmet. Did you uh, see there's, that? There's a whole bunch of people talking about that yeah, when we, I got there. So. We have pictures on social media. That still sticks out. That was like insane. That's pretty and cool. And Xavier McKinney um, on his Instagram even shared that and said it was the <laughs> biggest and craziest thing he signed. So oh that was pretty God. cool. That's cool. So that was last episode. Um, so this episode, we are going to talk about a couple of things that we posted on Instagram this past week. Um, I'll do a rundown of the events quickly at the end. We have an exciting event tonight. That's why everybody watching the video of this can see the football in front of the screen with our logo on it. Um, so we'll talk about that quickly. And then, um, from Nick's standpoint and from a service standpoint, I know we're always hiring technicians, but there's definitely a big need for it now. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So, um, first, just some of the, the posts that we've done on Instagram and some of the cool cars we've gotten in. We got in our first Mustang Mach-E GT. Um, this is the 480 horsepower uh, Mustang Mach-E trim level. We got it in. We actually instantly um, had to send it down to our Point Pleasant location because a uh, customer was looking at it. I think it's sold, uh, but hopefully we get more of those in. Um, we posted about, we had three really nice Mustangs in our showroom at once. We had our Scarlet Knight red and black Mustang, 750 horsepower. We had our GT500 golden ticket, which that one sold. And then uh, we still have our blue Roush Stage 3 available. Um, so that's right outside of Nick's service waiting area. You could always check out cool and specialty Mustangs there. And then the last one I want to bring up is that we got in one of our first yesterday 2021 Shelby F-150 um, Super Snakes in. So these are the ones that are a little bit lower to the ground. Um they have the extra uh, bumper pieces on the bottom, obviously different rims. Um, these are absolutely beautiful trucks. So it's one of our first Super Snakes in. It was a sold unit, like most of the incoming Shelby stuff is nowadays. Um, so that's going out today. But you could always order those um, or check out with our sales staff if we have incoming ones. So let's get into um, some of the stuff about the technicians. So you're always trying to hire techs, but um, always. you continue to grow the service department here. So you're definitely looking for more now. So talk a little bit about the job position, who should apply, um, what applicants you're looking for, really anything you want to say about the job position. Uh, well, we're basically looking for anybody. Uh, being a technician um, kind of comes with some cliches that are uh, erroneous cliches in the industry nowadays. You know, a lot of people think that mechanics are, you know, you see them in films and you see them in commercials and they're just dirty from head to toe, <laughs> filthy, covered in oil. And there are some mechanics out there that are like that. But for the most part, you know, it, we, we have a clean shop and you don't get that dirty. And it's very highly skilled work. You know, gone are the days of carburetors and spark plugs where you just pull a spark plug out and put a spark plug in. Cars had four. Nowadays, most cars have eight. And you have layers and layers upon engine parts on top of them. And things have gotten so complicated. They use such high-tech equipment, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of high-tech equipment and computers trying to diagnose weird, crazy concerns with this light on and this light on. And this noise only happens, you know, once every blue moon on, you know, in leap year. And so, you know, our technicians have to be highly skilled and highly trained. And a lot of them come out of high school with dreams of being a mechanic. And it's a lot different than what a lot of the young kids think of these days. You know, a lot of these young kids don't put a whole lot of thought into what they're going to do for their whole lives, for, for their career. 
they just know that they've you know fixed their dad's Honda Civic in the driveway years ago, and they think that okay, I want to be a mechanic now. But there are years of training and uh, to, that goes into it. it. It's a very disciplined trait. Um, techs can make six figures very easily in our in our business, and a lot of people don't realize that, but it's true. It's we pay very well because. In this country, also, we have a, uh, we're going to be entering into a shortage of technicians. A lot of the old style technicians that you see on those videos that are dirty from head to toe are retiring. They're leaving the industry, and at some point, these younger kids that are coming out of schools and high schools and colleges, a lot of them are going towards the tech area, you know, website design, internet based this and and that, and a lot of and, and not a whole lot of them are coming in to become technicians because again uh, of that cliche of the dirty from head to toe and you know guys work hard and working hard working and working hard hours I mean, yeah. it's uh you know it, it, they're they're not any different hours my guys work eight hours a day so it's not like people think that you have to work to midnight every single night fixing mm-hmm. cars um and so we train very well i pay for all training i'm looking for guys that have been in the business for a long time with experience. I'm looking for guys that are just coming into the business for the first time, guys that are interested and uh, all skill levels, you know, depending on the skill level, we start them in different positions. You know, a lot of them start off as an apprentice. So for a couple of weeks, couple of months, however long it takes, they start in the business fresh. They're paired up with a, a seasoned veteran technician. And it's something that they can then go and grow and learn from and understand most importantly, how the business actually works and what it takes to be productive and make money in the automobile industry. And then from that point, they either go off on their own or they're paired up with a quick service team member with two typical guys in the same skill level that double team every single car that comes in. So things get done a little bit faster and some of the one guy's shortcomings will be picked up by the other guy, hopefully. And they learn and they grow together while minimizing mistakes because always uh, the old cliche is two heads are better than one. So. And I I think with that too, like we have a lot of different options too, like with our Ford mobile service van, right? If you get that kid that doesn't want to just be stuck in the shop all day and maybe just needs to be out of, you know, out of the building in, in, in an environment where it's constantly changing and they can do different stuff. We have the mobile service van. We're potentially getting a second mobile service van where, you know, where we need teams for these mobile services where they go out on the road, they do fleets, they do, you know, residential jobs. And then, like you said, the, the quick lane service on the Subaru side is Subaru express service. Yep. So it's like, there's different types of even jobs within the technician field here sure. at the auto mall. And then not even to bring up, I mean, uh, our custom trucks, if they're interested in that, you get a big car guy that loves performance, tune up stuff like that. We do that and sure. we'll train for that. And then, I mean, Izuzu, our commercial trucks, our Jordan, there's just the third truck. Th- there's so many options here. It's like, it's even crazy. Not, even our body shop, we have body shop. It, we train, body shop, train and teach guys how to do body repairs and paint work. And that's more customizations too, right? Painting yep. uh, emblems and stuff like that. So uh, talk about um, kind of the, the recent class of people you're getting, where they're coming from. Like if somebody just kind of wakes up and they want to be a technician, like how do they start? Like what would be your recommendation to them? Or somebody wants to change fields. Maybe they're looking to change fields. Like have you come across that where they're working somewhere, maybe they're not making enough money. They got to realize they could, if they work hard and they're efficient here, they could make money. Like what kind of people kind of come over from those fields and what would you say to somebody who's starting out? So I have a whole mix of guys in the shop. My one of my favorite guys in the shop because his personality is Kyle Williams. He's a uh, about our age, or my age, as I'm older. Yeah, we're a little bit different. About my age, he had a career. uh, I'm not even sure what he was up to before this, and he just woke up one day with no prior technician experience whatsoever, and just said he has always had a dream of being a technician. Nice. And he came to me, and he had no experience, not even school training, nothing. And he said, hey, I'd like to have an opportunity. So I gave him an opportunity and he's he's learning, he's growing. And this is his second career at this point. And like I said, I don't recall exactly what he did before this, but it wasn't in any automotive field. Um, and then for the most part, um, we try and snatch kids from either at a high school level. So I have a number of kids that uh, went to high school, went to a vocational program in high school for automotive. And they decided to come out and looking for a job 
and kind of deciding what other um, education levels they want to go to. So I have some of those kids that I, I got right out of high school and they're happy and we develop our team and we grow them and we train them. And then there are kids that are currently in Ford programs or Subaru programs that are sponsored by them. It costs money. It's just like college. Generally, they're one year or two year programs and a kid will go around the country, right? All over the country. And then they'll generally go to this college during the day, come to us in the afternoon or vice versa. Sometimes classes in the afternoon. So they come to us in the morning and they work. And then they're basically learning and honing their skills at school and also getting some hands-on training. And then when they're done and graduated from school, they have a a much more basic foundation for the automotive world. Perfect. So the last thing I wanted you to bring up was kind of the the career path and the um, the advancement opportunities, right? So there's for the audience out there, and I'm sure I don't probably even understand this more, but A B C D all the way down to Z text if you want, mm-hmm. and then. Um, you know, the shop foreman and, and somebody like Michael Roman, our super sales manager or super service manager who was a technician and was just here for so long and grew so much in that position that, mm-hmm. you know, the, these techs can kind of become advisors at some point. They can, sure. like I said, become the mobile service where you're kind of an advisor and a tech at the same time to a degree. And then even service manager eventually. So the advancement opportunities and the different levels of certification just kind of touch on that. And because I feel like we're very good at that here in terms of, you know, wanting people to advance their career. Yeah, I mean, I I generally do not hire anybody or I hire very few people outside of the business, outside of our personal business. I'd like to promote from within. So, for example, Mike Roman, who we talk about on this podcast a lot, when I'm on it, he's a super manager. He started off as a technician, worked his way up to senior master certified tech. Uh, the same holds true for Ted, who is my dispatcher and warranty administrator. He started off with me and grew his way up to a senior master certified tech, decided that he wanted to retire from being a technician and now does our warranties and dispatches. Ryan, our main dispatcher, also started off at another dealership as a technician, but decided that he wanted to get out of being in the shop and grew and came and applied. And now he was a service advisor with me and now he's been promoted to a dispatcher for the last year or so. So, um, you know, our service advisors, almost all of them, almost all of them started off as valets. And they, I, you know, they decided that they liked what they saw in the business. They realized, you know, how profitable it can be, how it's nice to have a nice stable salary and a stable career. And so that they, we've promoted them from within same thing on the Subaru side, you know, for the most part, most of them are all promoted up from within. We had an episode about techs. You didn't mention our biggest selling point for technicians. We have air conditioning in the shop. <laughs> now, that might not seem like a luxury to most of you, but I don't think that it's there is time. more than five <laughs> dealerships or more than five repair shops in general in the entire state of New Jersey that have air conditioned shops. We put air conditioning in at a very large expense because I personally felt that our technicians who work their fingers to the bone and try and make every customer driving a safe and reliable vehicle should not be doing it in 110 degree weather. So we put air conditioning in all of our shops. Some of the older techs out there that are working at other shops probably just decided that they jot down our number and is going to call them (laughs) us right now. Uh, Some of the young kids that come out of school don't realize, you know, some of the younger guys, I walk through the shop and hear some of the older guys that have been here before we had air conditioning. And they they talk about how lucky the young kids coming out of school, coming to work at our dealership, how important it is to have air conditioning. They've never known the hardship of working in 100 degree heat in the shop. It's like your parents telling you the story that they used to walk uphill (laughs) both ways ways from school and three feet of snow. And that's kind of what it's like to work as a mechanic in a in a hot sauna of a shop. It's crazy, right? So fully air conditioned shop. Um, Nick, as your fearless leader and um, any techs out there, anybody who wants a job, I mean, we're looking for valets, we're looking for techs. Service advisors, I mean, everything, right, across the Everybody, board from yeah. service and parts. And then sales, obviously, always looking for salespeople, always looking for BDC. Um, there's been a huge worker shortage across the country. I talked about it on this podcast before. Everybody knows you You go out, you see, you know, pizza places with uh, help wanted science constantly. 
um, restaurants, everything. So uh, yeah. we are hiring. So if you're interested, there is a um, there's a link on our website for uh, an application. You could also just chat into our social media pages, make a comment on the post that I'll do for this podcast episode. Um, I've mentioned my email a couple of times and it's on um, some of the podcast sites, but it's just Jason at a Ford NJ.com. So um, take a shot, send your resume in. We're taking all interviews right now. Um, like I said, definitely want to hire a whole bunch of different positions and gear up for the end of the year. Um, so just to kind of end it quick, we'll talk about our event tonight. So tonight we have an F-150 Mafia um, tailgate barbecue party in the parking lot out front for the New York Giants against the Washington football team um, tonight for Thursday Night Football. It's exclusive for F-150 Mafia um, folks. Our staff is going to come out. Most of them drive F-150s, really. Um, I've actually invited some VIP honorary um, customers as well. So a uh, really fun event that we get to put on just from being a dealership of our size, you know, to success. And, and that's yeah, what, you know, fun. these customers get. And the F-150 Mafia, I know, um, tons of them have come into our service department now and customizations yeah. and stuff. So we're excited to kind of share this with them and give them this, um, you know, free food, free ability to watch the game. We're going to have games going on. We're going to have a cornhole tournament to win a 50 inch TV. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and these footballs that we're showing on the screen, um, this one football, we ordered a bunch of them. So we'll be giving those away. We'll be having catches in the parking lot with them. So uh, that's tonight. We'll do a little recap of it on the next episode. Um, and then the few events coming up in October, we have the uh, Subaru Loves Pets Petapalooza uh, pet adoption event um, with our co-host Sammy's Hope, which I think you got one of your animals from Sammy's Hope, right? Uh, I did get uh, my cat Gabby from... Sammy's Hope. Sammy's Hope. And then, um, you know, we always have Rescue Ridge there, which I know. Um, I got three animals got from Rescue from Ridge. From Rescue Ridge. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have Husky House coming to that, the Old Bridge Animal Shelter. We'll talk about that more as that gets closer, but that's October 9th. We have the Jimmy Allen concert, October 17th. Uh, tickets are on sale at oldbridgeconcertforhope.com. So buy the tickets. They're selling very quickly. We've sold out of our 10 uh, super VIP tickets, which were the $200 tickets to have a meet and greet with Jimmy Allen. So those 10 nice. sold out. Um, and the VIP and the general admission tickets are going quick for that. Last event I want to mention is the October 18th. We're going to have the Ford Maverick here for a quick sneak peek. It is a Monday. It's during the day. It's only during lunch hours. Uh, the Ford trainers here. I know you got to see the Ford Maverick in person. Where was that? In Dallas? In Dallas. We, Ford we went for a Ford grassroots meeting, and uh, I was really impressed with it. With the Maverick. I, right? I went into it thinking, like, oh, this is just going to be, you know, another car, nothing fancy. And I was very impressed with it. I actually drove it through the streets of Dallas. Nice. And uh, it had pickup, and it was roomy, and it was – it is going to be a huge hit with our customer base and, and people everywhere. I'm telling That's you, awesome. It's going to be huge. So that's October 18th, the sneak peek of that. Um, I'll talk about that more as it gets closer. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, the ability to come check it out. Uh, if you place an order or you've reserved it, we've had hundreds of those already. So um, that's October 18th. So that's our episode. Thanks for joining, and we'll be back next week. Well, we